Hello, Rick Roslin Science here, and I'm uh, glad to see you guys coming back for another science video. All you need to start with is your science journal. And remember, your science journal is a place for you to write down your questions, your ideas, your investigations for you to keep track of. It. And I like to start mine with my science model is that science is for everyone, everywhere, even when you're at home. So I'd like to say uh, hello to all my Wayne Township teachers and friends and students and people around the world that join me. Even some of my students from Egypt that I used to teach years ago have been contacting me about seeing some of this science. Well, let's get started. Today's lesson or today's demonstration has to do with electricity, one of the four forces in the universe that we know of, electromagnetic energy, and it has to do with a type of circuit. Remember the word circuit kind of sounds like a circle. So a circuit is a path that electricity goes through. In my last two lessons on this topic, simple circuits, series circuits, and today parallel circuits, we will learn that they have a lot in common, but they have some differences. So just a few things to review. First of all, this is a form of energy, electromagnetic energy. And usually we have some batteries which have to do with chemical energy. Inside of a battery, you can look this up, there are two types of metals and two types of there's chemicals that allow a battery to store energy. And then when you use it, it the current will come out of it. So we have a lot of different batteries I'm going to show you. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a D battery, it's one and a half volts. Uh, here is a one and a half, this is a, a, an A battery, a double A. We have a triple A, uh, one of my favorite, the nine volt battery. And here is a three volt battery. And I even have, and these batteries look pretty cool, but they also, uh, this is a, a three volt battery that's a, a wafer battery because of its shape. We'll look at those more closely later. So, a couple words. Remember we did this uh, about uh, uh, that in a circuit, there is a path, usually a wire. There is a source, usually a battery. And there is a appliance or a load, or in this case, a light bulb. And so you see how we connect these two. And I made this little simple circuit to test things and I put them together and the light comes on. Here's a, a bigger version I made. With the light, uh, let's see, I'm checking out right here. And I made this drawing that shows you the different parts. So we'll take a closer look at this here in just a second. But if you connect the two leads here and here, we can get a complete circuit. And the lights come on. And the lights come on. So we'll take a closer look at that. I want to start by saying also that electricity is everywhere. It's in the clouds. It's in the sky. It's in your body. It's in your house, and electricity is a form of energy that lets us do work. And what is work? Work is when you use a force to move an object. That's the science definition, simple science definition of work. So let's get started on our parallel circuits. One more thing to think about. Materials, some materials let electricity go through it, like aluminum foil, or my gold ring, or my silver watch. Those are called conductors. When electricity passes easily through a material, that's a conductor. Some materials don't let electricity go through, and those are called insulators. Plastic, rubber, glass, wood, and even cardboard are insulators. Most metals are conductors. So some words that we talked about, and I'm going to write these down, are energy, electromagnetism, circuits, and insulators and conductors. And I tell you, so today we're going to do what's called a parallel circuit. And you probably need to know what the word parallel means. Parallel is like two lines that never intersect. Like your fingers being like this are parallel. And that's the type of circuit we're going to make. So let's get started. Let me come over to the other side and let's check out what words and some things in our science notebook. Here we go. I'm going to switch on down here. Take a closer look at this. 
This is a little test that I made, and you can make this at home also, to test if something is a conductor or an insulator. So you can see right here that uh, this guy, if I can move this even better, this guy, here's my battery, and the wire, the path goes all the way through, and if I touch these two together, the light comes on. You can see that up there. Here we go, the light comes on. Now, what I can do then is test some things. So if this is switches open, if I do this, it closes and we see the lights come on. So let's try some things. Let's put a piece of uh, tape. Wonder if tape is a conductor or an insulator. I hook this side of the alligator clip over here and this here, what do you do? Make a prediction, you think it's gonna work? No. It is an insulator. Let's try this piece of aluminum foil. Put my piece of aluminum foil, I'll fold it in half, I'll put one on this side. All right, and on this side, and let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. So my foil is a good conductor. I can even try my uh, wedding ring. Let me see if I can hook my ring right here. I'll put my ring on that side, and we'll touch it on this side and see what happens, ready? Look at that. My wedding ring made out of gold is a good conductor. So you can make one of these simple uh, testers like I've done, but you might think, well, how am I gonna find a, a light bulb or an LED? Well, I just, I got all kind of stuff. You, there's, you'd be surprised of all the stuff around your house that, that has an LED in it, like these crazy uh, <laughs> Halloween gloves that I can turn the switch on. And uh, I took one of these apart in the last show. And if I take one of these apart, I actually have uh, some LED lights right here. And we can actually cut these apart and take one of these. Let's use the red one. Pull these LED lights. And here's one right here. Let me take my scissors. And I can cut the path or the wire. And now I have a little light. I wonder if this will work. Hmm. Now what makes an LED light uh, or any wire is that inside is metal, which is a conductor, and it's usually covered by an insulator, in this case, some plastic. So I pulled off, and you can see that right there, I pulled off the insulation to get to, I hope, the wire. Here we go. And there's a silverish metal, and then here is a copper metal. Well, let's see what will happen when I use this battery. I'm gonna use this three volt wafer battery. Look, talk about battery safety. When One way to stop batteries from uh, being used when you don't want them to use is put an insulator over them. In this case, I put tape over that one. And the way this one came, it came with a piece of plastic that I have to pull off. Because plastic is a good insulator and I want a good conductor. So, pull that guy off. And I just, uh, my bird is very happy today, <laughs> you hear her in the background. So I'm gonna put this on one side and put that on the other side and see if it lights up. Look at that, cool. Now I'll tell you about an LED light. If you do it the opposite way, put one on this side and try to light it, they won't light up. LEDs are designed so that the electricity will only work going one way through it. So, if it, so don't be discouraged if it doesn't work at first. It may not be a good connection, but if you put it like that, so that's the cool thing about LEDs. Now, we also have some of these uh, little lights that I've given lots of kids in Wayne Township. This is not an LED light. This is an incandescent light, a little sausage light. And a lot of times these used to be used. These used to be used in electronics when so you know if something's on or off. But now most people use LED because this uses a lot more energy than an LED, but it still will work. Let's turn it on this side. Look, I got it on that side, and I got it on this side, and it lights up. And I'll just to show you, it'll work either way because the electricity will flow through it either way. So there's a big difference between an LED light and an incandescent light. We're using more and more LED lights because they use a lot of less electricity and they don't lose energy through heat like an incandescent. 
All right, let's get take a look at our notebooks. That's some things that you probably should be writing down right about now is, what are we going to need for today's lesson? Parallel circuits, okay? Well, one thing you might need is you need a light of some sort. You need a light. I don't care if it's an LED or not, but, you know, you can even have an LED light. You need some tape. You need some foil. You need a battery of some sort. And it wouldn't hurt to have either some paper or some cardboard. Okay. Now, let's look at batteries for a second. Check out these batteries. Here's a, um, here's a battery. One and a half volt. And I bet your mom or your dad have one of these around the house. This is a battery tester. And even my Rowan, who's only four years old, she loves using the battery tester to check batteries. Now, you can check the different types of batteries either by moving the switch here like this. I'm going to put it on one and a half volt batteries. Okay, right about there. And there's, there's two leads, a red positive and a black neutral. And so you can, this is kind of tricky. You can hold it with one hand or somebody, somebody help you. Let's see if this battery is good. If it's good, we should see some movement of our needle. Ready? Oh, you see that? Yes, it's good. But this little battery tester is pretty cool because it has a button here that says negative. Can you see that? It says negative. So I can just set that negative part of the battery right here and then use my red one. And let's see if I, look at that, a lot easier. That way I don't have to use two hands. So there must be a circuit inside of there. Hey, what do you think is gonna happen if I put the black on black on here? Ah, the needle doesn't move. Actually, it probably move in the opposite direction. Let's try this big old battery here. Once again, put the negative on the negative. And it says it's good. So these batteries, you can test them. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. And now, so we've talked about batteries and circuits. So some of the words that we were talking about is the word circuit. And circuit sounds like circle. <clears throat> and so a circuit has to go all the way around and come back. Like a circle or a circus or a three ring circus or like a circuit where the judge comes or like a Maximus circus like the Romans had giant amphitheaters. So circle, circuit means to go and come back. So when we make our circuit, it has to come back. And if you remember, we did something simple like this on our first one. This is a symbol for a battery. There's my battery. Here comes my circuit. Here's my switch. And that switch is open right there. Can you see how it's open? Okay. And let's move the path, the wire on down and bring it over here to a light bulb. And there is a simple circuit. But today, we're not going to do a simple circuit, and we're not going to do, remember this guy right here? A series circuit, because a series circuit, we did that last week, they're in line. We're going to, we know that if we, if we break one of these, they all go out. So engineers, technicians, electricians use something called a parallel circuit. And a parallel circuit looks kind of like this. Check it out. So here we have a battery up here, a battery. We have a path of some kind of conductor and we have three light bulbs hooked up and a switch. So my question is if I close that switch, those lights should come on. But what happens if one of the lights goes out? And that's what we're gonna build and find out today. And so let's build that. So you got my piece of cardboard here. Let's back it up a little bit and see if we can, uh, you can see the cardboard. All right. Okay. And I always like to draw it out first. So we're going to have the, um, I think the best thing to do is let's have the, uh, the light or the bulb up here, the bulb or the, you know, oh, we're, we're going to put a couple bulbs and a bulb and a bulb. 
okay? And so we're gonna have these lines going through here like this, and here like this, and here like this. Now, down here, let's put a battery. There's my battery. Okay, and we'll put some connectors. Let's see on my piece of cardboard here. If you draw this out and plan it out, you're making this cool sketch that you're gonna do then use that as your plan to make your circuit. So let's have this wire come out and go up here like this and come out and go up here like this. All right. Now you noticed I went past it because now we have to connect here, here, connect here, connect here, connect here, connect here, connect here. And I'm leaving these open at the end, which is a, something we'll talk about in just a second. All right, so let's get started. I think I'll use, uh, for this one, I think I'm going to use a 9-volt uh, battery, a 9-volt battery. And I'm going to use my foil. And uh, I'm going to put, uh, let's see here. I'm going to start by putting my 9-volt battery. I'm going to hook this guy right here to one side of my battery. Remember, we never want to go across here because if you go across, that will short it out and all the energy will go from one side to the next and it could cause a fire. So there's that guy going like that. Okay, let's try another side. Electricians probably have a name for these. Maybe that's the leg, I don't know, I'm not sure. Maybe you could look that up. There we go, we'll put this guy on that side. And it's real important that you leave a gap in there. Can you see that gap? I do not want to jump across there. So now I have my conducting foil and my insulating tape. All right. Let's, we better test this with a light. Let's, let me try the LED light. Maybe the LED light. You always want to test to make sure that, that you got your connection. So I'm going to put this LED light on one side and on this side, and it doesn't work. Hmm, could be two problems. I could have uh, not connected well, or let's flip the LED over and see. Uh, there we go. Thought I saw it blink for a second. Let's see here. Try that again. So don't go too far without testing this to see if it's working all right. Not that way. Let's put the copper line wire on that side and see what happens. So that tells me there's a short somewhere. Maybe it's the light. Let's try this guy. Ready? Let's try an incandescent light. Science is a lot about problem solving. Oh, look at that. So that must have been, you know what? Some of these lights only work for a certain amount of voltage. I'm using a nine volt. This may only be a one and a half volt LED. And that may have been too much for it. It might have burned it out right at the start. Probably that's what happened. That's kind of cool. You'd want, you know, you want the battery to match the bulb. So that's probably what happened to that guy. But these guys can handle it. All right, here we go. So there's my battery. I think I might just tape this down now that I know it works. Put a little piece of tape just to hold it in place right here. And put it in right here. Okay. Let's get these a little bit closer. And let's put our first bulb right across it and see what happens. Ready? The one there. Remember, metal to metal and then the tape. So metal to metal and then the tape. That's pretty important. Otherwise, you will not have a connection. And to test it, here we go. Ready? Yep, that's working. So we'll know that that touches there. Let's add another one. Now, here's a good question. Do you think when I add this other one, will the lights be as bright or less bright? If we just add one, not a problem. Let's test it. Yep. Let's test that one. Yep. Okay. Let's add another light. So you see these are in parallel. 
I am so glad that they make Christmas tree lights now in parallel. <laughs> they used to be in series. If one went out, they all went out. Let's see what's going to happen with our parallel. So there's our three. Let's test that one. Ready? Yep. All right. Now, we could use another piece of foil if you wanted to make it even easier to come out. So we could put foil across here. But I think I did this okay that we can just do it like this. Let's hook that guy. Here we go. Put that guy right there. That's lit. Let's push this one over here and see if we can get that one to light up. There we go. And number two. Oh, you notice they're not as bright. And number three, let's see what happens when we put number three on there. So the current going, these parallel circuits all share the same battery. Now, when you do that, so notice how these get a little bit loose. This guy's, so let's reconnect this guy. There we go. We have all three of them off of the same battery. Now, think of this current as water going through. And so if it's water going through, if we shut down one of these, what's going to happen to the rest? We shut down one of these, what's going to happen? Let's find out. Let's pull this one off and see what happens. Ready? If you pull this out, well, let's pull this one out. If we pull this one out, will those go out? Let's find out. Nope. Look. So it allows the current to go around one that's turned off or turned back on. Your house, your school is like that. Wouldn't it be crazy if you flipped one switch and all the electricity in the whole house went out? That's a series. But no, you can flip the switch off in your bedroom and the rest of the house is fine. Now, here's the biggest problem people make. What's going to happen if I connect these two up here? These are open. We can actually add more lights or bulbs to it. And the more we add to it, now they're all sharing that 9 volts. We can add another one to it. Because they have to share the one battery, so they're getting dimmer, but the same amount of current is going through all of them. Ding, ding, ding. If I take one off, they all get brighter. I take another one off, they all get brighter. I turn another one off, they all get brighter. Kind of cool. But here's my question. And a lot of teachers get this wrong and kids get this wrong. What's going to happen if I connect these two? You're going to make a short. Oops. You're going to make a short right here because if you connect these two, electricity says, I'm not going to go through those lights. That's hard. Instead, I'm going to go through the easy way, which is right here, and it's going to short everything out. Let's try it. Ready? And that gets hot. So that's a short because now the electricity just says, I'm going to go in a circle. And there's nothing there. It's going to go where it's easiest. So there you have kind of a simple circuit. I hope, uh, and this is a parallel circuit. It's a parallel circuit. It's different from some of these other circuits we looked at. It's different from some of these other circuits we looked at. It's different from, here's our parallel. And uh, a week ago, we did, uh, here's our simple circuit. And we also did a pretty cool Series circuit. This is our parallel circuit. Easy to make. Have some fun with it. And remember, be safe. <laughs> don't uh, don't use anything that's uh, plugged in the house. And a parallel circuit. If one goes out, the rest still work. I'll see you next time. Thanks.